The video you're about to watch has been designed to take you deeper, higher, and wider into Yahweh. Enjoy, and please subscribe. Thank you. Father, as we begin to understand the concept of stepping into you, tonight we want to step into the yad hey vav hey. <clears throat> physically, stepping into the force of the name of Yahweh. So right now, I want you to start picturing how you physically step into the ox, lion, eagle, man. Find yourself in the fullness of Yahweh, stepping into Him. And as you step into Him, I want you to find yourself on the golden mountain. So I need you to start picturing this. I'm going to take you through a, a process, something the Father has uh, spoken to me about, that I will take the school the students on a journey for the next couple of weeks to take you to the 12 chambers the Father has taken me into and it has changed my life. It's a dimension of who Yahweh is that He has taken us into, but he, that He wants us to be open for. So as He's taken me into the mountain before, I went into the mountain of gold, and inside of it there was like a valley, uh, incredibly beautiful, uh, mind-blowing, uh, can't really express it in, in words, but there was uh, layers of gold, diamonds, rubies, just uh, incredible plants, um, different types of wood going into the side, all living, breathing, beautiful. And then there was these 12 angels, each guarding a door, and then behind the door there was 12 chambers. And inside each of these chambers there was a representation of a dimension the Father so desperately desires for the ecclesia to go into. So the first door was called Love. It was a chamber of love, then hope, then faith, then honor, then favor, then life, realms, dimensions, intimacy, fire, friendship, and the physical body. That was what the, the chambers represent. And every time I would go into this chamber, I will first walk in with the angelic being that is in charge of that chamber door. And as we start going in, it will just be a time of absolute overshadowing, refreshing, with whatever the door represents. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to go into three doors. Reason being is I've done it several times in some of the other schools, and I really just want you guys to experience this as well. So I need you to activate your imagination. I want you to activate your inward sight. Activate the enlightenment of your understanding so you can physically go into this court and into these chambers with me. So right now I want you to find yourself standing on the mountain of gold. There's there's a couple of us in this room, so I want you to see those around you. It's not a small mountain, it's a massive mountain. Uh, it seems like this mountain has come, uh, come, come into being through Yahweh um, as He comes out of the mountain of, 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 of Zion. He, he almost, the glory that falls from Him um, forms this mountain. It's massive, it is beautiful, it is absolutely incredible. It is life, it gives life. Um, it has an angel on it, there's several other beings on it as well, of course. But the one specific angel on there is called Metrodome. And we begin to understand what he does is he gives out keys to sons and daughters for different aspects, different things in life. But right now, I want you to find yourself walking on this mountain with Yahweh. And what's about to happen is we're about to descend into the mountain. Now, Understand that when you descend into a mountain, it, it doesn't have to not naturally just be the inside of a mountain. It could be that you are descending into another dimension, another kingdom, another realm. And so when we go into this mountain, what I've experienced, it looked like a massive valley. You know, I even saw some, 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 some living beings, animals, just running through this valley. And as we look at the beauty of it, <clears throat> there's water flowing through the side. There's, it's just incredible. Then all of a sudden you see these, these six doors on one side, six doors on the other side, and with these incredible angelic beings standing right there. Yahweh kind of stays, he kind of goes on to the mountain of, of the Lord, to his throne, and he kind of wants you to engage with what's there. The angel's name at the first door is Agape. He represents the dimension of love the Father wants the Ecclesia to engage. So right now I want you to stand before this door. I want you to look at the angel. I want you to engage with him. And welcome him. Honor him. And as you go into the door, into the chamber, 
I want you to start looking around. Now, I've been into this room uh, several times over the last couple of weeks, and I've worked before that. And what I've noticed is it changes a little bit every time I go in, and I remind you that every time you go into the encounter, that which you have previously seen, you don't have to um, understand or perceive again. So the next time you go in, you can see more. So I want you to go into this room, and I want you to start looking around. It is there to overshadow you with agape love. It's there to literally have the fullness of Yahweh push into you and over you and to open your spirit back up to receive and perceive what it means to walk in the fullness of love. And this scripture will come into your mind that the love of God casts out all fear. The love of God leads man to, <clears throat> to repentance. Uh, for God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. We need to understand that, that God is love. And in this chamber, and it's not a small little room where you will compact and can't move, it's massive. Matter of fact, it's got a fountain and a river coming in from the side. The fountain squirts out this living dimension of water that you can't really perceive in the natural, and you just want to go into it. You just want to find yourself in that river or in that fountain. So I want you to stand by this fountain and I want you to just kind of splash it over your face. En engage with what you see. Look at the beauty. There says diamonds and rubies and I see there says chairs and, and, and seats almost built out of the wall from the side. Uh, and there says uh, just so much you can look at. The presence of Yahweh in this chamber is, is overwhelming. Let, let, it, let, let it overshadow you. The Father's desire with this is for us to see it and begin to understand what it means to truly love. The power of love and what it means to go into the world and not look at what the world does, but to love the world unconditionally. We can't do that. We've never done that. I look at, at some of the things that have been going on in our city in New Orleans where there are signs that people physically actually walk with that says, turn or burn. Why shouldn't you go to hell? This is not what the world wants to see. They want to be loved. They do not believe in sin. They do not believe that the things they do is wrong. Because they don't have that perception. It's only the religious that have that mindset. It's the love of God, the pure love of God that's projected from a son to the world that begins to change the image. Uh, people begin to see and perceive what they're supposed to be because they have something to look at and see but that's what I really want for my life. So in this chamber the Father is overshadowing you with this dimension of love. I want you to, get, to gather all that you can and then I want you to start slowly moving out of that, that chamber. The door right opposite is where the door, the, the angel of hope stands. The angel's name is hope. And I want you to find yourself going into that door. It looks pretty much the same. Um, it's a different type of spirit that is in there, uh, meaning it's a different vibe that is to give you an understanding, a perception of hope, uh, having a revelation, the knowledge that the Father loves you and overshadows you and his desire for you to be propelled. His desire is to bless you. His desire is to increase you. His desire is to teach and train and equip you. His desire is to put you in a place within creation where you understand your rulership, where you understand all that He has placed in you and how it needs to function in creation. It's to give you hope. It's to give you a future. It's to propel you in everything that you're called to do. It's to have you understand what you are to hope for. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Things, faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, something like that. But we are beginning to understand you need hope to grow in your faith. You need hope to understand and perceive what you want to have faith for. So if I look at this chamber and I've been in it several times and I've, I've engaged it, I've enjoyed it so much, uh, the Father has showed and revealed to me much. Now, I just want to remind you that when you came out of that doorway of, of love, um, what happened is that angel put a, a, a cloak of love over your shoulders. And it will happen with every door you come out of, the angel in charge will cover you with a cloak 
So the next quote will be hope. And while we're in this room, I want you to go to that fountain, the fountain of hope. And I want you to splash it in your face. Find yourself completely in it. So that you can feel the radiance of the frequency of hope and the dimension the Father is releasing it in and over you. I want you to look at this angelic being. See the beauty. See what he carries. See the value in him. And as we slowly move out, let him place. Let him, take, let, let him place that mantle of hope over your shoulders. We're going back to the other side. This door is next to the door of love. And it's the door uh, of faith. The chamber of faith. The angel's name is faith. I want you to be reminded that when you enter into this door of faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence or realities of things not seen. The Father wants you to begin to understand what it means to not be the bride, meaning you do not have to focus on your own faith. But when you step in beyond the veil and He begins to overshadow you with the dimension of faith that He makes available, it's His faith. Uh, you want to go through the stages. You want to be reminded of the fruit of faith that's still growing in your life. You want to be reminded of the gift of faith. You want to be reminded of the law of faith. Then you want to find yourself in the understanding of what it means to be the bride of Christ and understanding the faith that she has to have and that her faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But now that we step in behind the veil, and as sons and daughters, we operate as the body, our faith is no longer determined on how we hear the word, because now we are in the word, and as a matter of fact, we are the body of Yahweh. So your faith changes. So while you're in this chamber, let the Father overshadow you. And as you climb into that fountain of faith, let it overshadow you. Let, let it wash you and refresh you with the full dimensions of faith. So you can engage it and you can walk in it and remind yourself within the kingdom of heaven there is even a person called faith. It's angels called faith. You've got a person called, person called faith. You've got the law of faith. You've got the gift of faith. You've got the faith as the bride. You've got the faith as the body. You've got um, all these different dimensions of faith. The Father wants to combine it and overshadow you with it. Now remind yourself that you're getting a cloak of faith. The combination of these three cloaks is life-changing. And as we come out of the chamber and the angel of faith puts that cloak over you, I want you to start expanding your spirit. And slowly as you expand your spirit, you're going to be ascending unto the top of the mountain. When you get to the top of the mountain, uh, Metrodome is going to give you a key. Now, I don't know where you're at in your life, well, I know where you're at in your life, but wherever you act in your life, according to where you act and where you need to be propelled in, He's going to hand you a key to propel you in that dimension of your life. I want you to take that key and then slowly begin to expand your spirit, man, <clears throat> and slowly come back into the atmosphere. When you come into the atmosphere of the earth, uh, I want you to start breathing your breath, into creation. Hey, I want you to start blowing your breath into creation. Blow it into your family life. Blow it into your workplace, into your business. Blow it into your city. Blow it into the state. Blow it into the nation. Find yourself expanding of the spirit and breathing love, hope, and faith into place. This is how the Father is, um, uh, is teaching us to align creation. This is how we answer the call of creation by legislating the dimensions that the Father is opening up for us in the heavens. So Father, we just as we slowly come back into the room as spirit beings, we begin to understand Yahweh that you are everything. We are in you. We're in the Yah Hey Vav Hey. 
in the fullness of your name. We're in the Yad Hei Shen Vav Hei, in the fullness of Yeshua. We love and move and breathe and have our being in you, my King, and we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the power and the fire and the revelation we get to walk in because of what you've done across Jesus. You are majestic, and we love you, we honor you, we praise you. Thank you, my Father. Amen. Now, I want to remind you of something, guys. This, you know, we, we are so conditioned to believe, oh, that was a nice exercise, that was nice. Um, but it's an actual engagement. You know, so you might not have understood it in its full capacity, but, but everybody in this room went into the kingdom of heaven. Now, whether you were consciously aware of the fact that you went in or not, or you just followed my lead, your spirit man is actively involved in what's happening in the kingdom of heaven. Your spirit man is fully knowledgeable of all things in the kingdom of heaven. Your spirit man does not need to, to be trained or equipped. It's your soul and your body that needs to be trained and equipped. Okay, so the idea of these chambers, and again, unfortunately, I can't go to Moses 19, 17 and say, well, this is the 12 chambers that the Father has left for us to engage. It's what I've found in the kingdom of heaven, and it's changed my life. As a spirit being, when I go into these chambers, I get the fullness of Yeshua. I get the fullness of Yahweh and you know, the washing of these dimensions over me shifts me into a deeper place. And I've realized that because I have gone into the, the 22 living letters and I've engaged with each of them separately for several years now, um, they have opened up many gateways and doorways within the kingdom of heaven for me that's spurping to go into. Now slowly but surely my spirit of my soul, my body is engaging with it and beginning to perceive what my spirit's already doing. But I need to understand what happened just now was real. And that uh, the atmosphere in creation is already shifting because of what we just did. That's what legislation all about. That's what legislation is all about. Bringing what we experience in the kingdom of heaven into creation. It's not a fantasy. It's not something I've made up. It's something I've engaged before and the Father said I can take my students into these chambers and have them engage it in their weeks. Now you get to go back into your engagement with Yahweh and your worship, your adoration, back into these chambers. Sometimes when you go into a chamber there might be one of the seven spirits. There might be other creatures in there or other beings in there that you need to engage for purpose. Because everything we're doing as sons and daughters of Yahweh right now is training and equipping. Don't neglect the study and meditation of the word, the written, but remind yourself that there's not just the written to engage. Uh, we have to engage the, that which is spoken. The which is spoken comes out of the kingdom of heaven. It goes into the different kingdoms, into the different realms, different dimensions. Because what was spoken is still in the atmosphere. Now the spirit beings we get to go in and take what we want according to what we are led into. How are you guys doing? Okay, so the last couple of weeks, uh, I said the last couple of weeks, but because this school is every other week, it's going to take twice as long. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it'll take us 24 weeks to do um, these letters. Now, I don't want to rush the letters, you know, because they are so significant and they're so incredible. And because they are individual beings that you can engage in the spirit, I would urge you to go do your own private study. Because what I'm doing here, it's a, it's a very basic um, uh, outline of the letters with my own engagement uh, revelation in it. But I need you to also go and engage. Now, a good book to get is the uh, Friends of Eber um, by... Uh, I would go as far as to say just go to um, the rockamobile.org and get it from there because there's many... I think there was a five or six uh, people that wrote the book. So for me to just say, well, this is the person who wrote it, I'm not 100% sure I don't have the book with me, but I would urge you to get that book. And then of course you, go, you can go on Kindle, and there's a lot of basic uh, books on the different letters. They like to give you the history of the letter, they like to give you the um, historical understanding and revelation of the letter, and then of course the meaning of the letter, and then just all the other basics. Okay, cool. Thank you. You have a first edition and a second edition. It is the Hebraic alphabet, and it is uh, written by Aaron Smith, Sarita 
um, Bowen, Elizabeth Corley, um, J.A. Butler, and Daniel Cook. And it is pretty incredible. If you haven't seen it, that's what it looks like. I would definitely urge you to get it. I think it's like $15. Uh, maybe a little bit less, I think it's $12.99. But it will help you to understand who Eber is and what happened at the Tower of Babel, where the pictorial language was taken and we had to start speaking. That's what we're doing. This is a lower form of communication. <clears throat> so, we're doing the hey, but I want to remind you that Hebrew letters are not just ordinary letters. Each letter is... Um, each letter is not just a symbol, but it, is a, it has different, different inner meanings from literal meanings to deeper spiritual meanings. And not just that, if you engage the letters in the kingdom of heaven. Now, now I've noticed that many people are kind of getting left behind because they do not activate their imagination. They're not going into the kingdom of heaven. They're still trying to do things on this side of the veil. You have to understand, now that the revelation is to engage on that side of the veil, this side of the veil's value is decreasing. And I know that people get angry when I say that, but I'll give you an example, and that's not, not quite where Ian was going with this example, but this is what I'm saying. Um, a farmer, and I've shared this before, but a farmer is praying to God. Now, you have to understand, um, someone on this side of the veil, someone on that side of the veil is two different people. Two different creatures. Okay, because on this side of the veil, I'm a son, I am a king, I'm a priest, I'm a legislator, I'm an oracle. On this side of the veil, most of the time, I am working towards becoming the bride, I'm a servant or a bond servant. So a farmer prays and says, I really need rain because my farm, I'm going to lose my farm, my animals are going to die. So he's praying fervently and the prayer is answered. Yahweh says, okay, well, it, it'll rain. But so uh, the forecast says brain and a son, this is one that has been in the kingdom of heaven, that operates out of the courts, that has an understanding and revelation of who he is as a son in the kingdom, goes and says, well, I have plans with my family and I need to stop this rain in the courts. Now you have to understand something because we don't like to hear this, but a son that has dominion over creation um, has the ability, the capacity to go into the courts and manifest the governance that's his. Authority. And so he stops the storm because he has plans for his family for the day. Yahweh has to give that over to the son and it immediately becomes his responsibility. Now the farmer doesn't get the rain. He loses his farm and some of his animals die. All that responsibility goes on to the son that didn't go into the kingdom of heaven to get the blueprint for the day. That didn't know the mandate and what the father has planned. He didn't see the heart of the Father or perceive mm. what the Father wanted to do because he had his own agenda. Right. Mm. So we have to begin to understand the Father wants us to perceive and understand uh, what we need to do and how we need to do it. But as a son, I have preference over one that operates on the side of the veil. So if you want to continue to be the bride, that's okay. But there's a deeper, higher place that the Father has called us to. And it's to be the body. And it's engaging within the kingdom of heaven with these incredible beings. Now I know people say, well, how are you engaged with other beings other than Yahweh? It's all about Jesus. It's all about worshiping Jesus. You forget that in the kingdom of heaven, every act is worship unto him. Everything. I mean, his desire is to, for you to be trained and equipped. His desire for you is to come in there, body, soul, spirit. So he has to get your spirit to have its full memory back and its full function so that it can begin to download. Of course, your gates have to be open. That's your body gates, your soul gates, your spirit gates has to be open in its full capacity for the Father to begin to bring in everything into full depletion. That's why we have to divide soul and spirit and body and soul. And I said this to someone this morning, and then you have to reunite it in Christ. Right. Because they, they are not separated, but they are. Because I have to have my spirit function in its way and what it needs to do in the manner that it needs to do it. I have to have my soul to do the things that needs to be done in the manner that it needs to be done. And I have to have my body. My body is my key into what the Father has destined for us in this time and season. Right. That's why I cannot die. That's why you have to live in your tomorrow today. Right. Not the other way around. Right. Right. 
Because if I live in my tomorrow, today, I know that I will not die today. Because I've already seen my tomorrow. Yeah. Which means no weapon formed against me can prosper. That's right. How are you guys doing? Right. So what we have done up to this point, we have done um, Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalit, and tonight we're doing Hey, it's my favorite one, one of my favorite ones. Now, of course, hey is special. Now, you have to understand how special hey is when it appears in the name of Yahweh twice. Okay, it is an intense dimension that the Father desires for the Ecclesia to engage. The revelation that comes out of the hey is more than just the letter. Okay, so hey represents divine revelation. That's an infused knowledge that is poured into your spirit man uh, without your knowledge of what he already knows. Meaning that my soul, uh, as a separate being from my spirit, does not understand or perceive the things that hate pours into my spirit when I engage it. But when my spirit aligns with my soul and I begin to open my mouth, the revelation, the divine revelation that comes out of the engagement, the infused knowledge, comes out of my mouth. Yeah. Because it literally pulls soul and body in yes. and it begins to operate as an oracle through what hay is brought in. Thank you. And I remind you, these are fiery gates. That's right. Now I say fiery gates, um, not fire brigades, yes. fiery gates. Uh, uh, people might see them differently, you know. I mean, I know what it looks like when I engage with them. Um, but like I say, if I go into... Um, um, Apostle Aaron Smith's church, what they've done is they have engaged with the letters individually and they have designed them, they have uh, literally placed them on their walls as they perceive what they would look like as a being. And it looks like it's incredible. It's in the shape of, of what the letter is, of course, it's just incredible. So if you've never been there, I would urge you to maybe see if you can get there sometime. But it's incredible to understand that these beings are waiting for sons to engage with them. And it's all about revelation, insight, knowledge. It's about really the Father just pr propelling you into who you are. So we can begin to grow in the knowledge of who he is. Yeah. That's his main function and, and desire. But we understand that the hay represents divine revelation, the breath of the creator. Now you have to understand, our creator does not need to breathe. Right? Right. right? So when Adam and Eve, or when Adam received the breath of God in that in Eden, mm -hmm. he did not need to breathe either. Right. We understand that. So what's the breath for? It's the breath of the Creator to create. Right. So your breath is not for you to love, but for you to expand creation. Yes. That's one of the things James says, your tongue's like a rudder, mm -hmm. yeah. right? You watch what you say, because what you speak, you create. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we know the milk of that revelation. We might have a bit of a meat on that revelation, but the mystery of that revelation is that we have the capacity to literally create yes. with whatever comes out of our mouths, yes. because it is fully the breath of Yahweh. That's why you're engaging the hey, it's Yod, hey, love, hey, Yod, hey. Wow, well, hey, stepping into the name and then operating from out of that fullness. Wow. That is the dimension of the almighty power of God. Yeah, that's, right. mm -hmm. that's the all-powerful dimension that we get to step into. That's why we operate out of the four faces. Mm -hmm. And we're beginning to understand what two of the four faces does not come into creation. It stays in the kingdom of heaven because I operate as king and priest in the kingdom of heaven. Right. With Yahweh, I operate there and I, I shift the dimensions from there into creation as um, a oracle and a uh, legislator. Right. We need to have that understanding. Because when I engage hay, what it opens up for me is the understanding of my breath. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, Jesus says to um, Adam, bring the, he bring, brings the animals to him and says, name them. Now, we don't always understand what happened at, at that point, because what did he say? Okay, this is an elephant, this is a horse, that's a rabbit, that's a mouse, that's a horse. I don't know, we did horse already. 
Bird, whatever out there is lion, tiger, eagle, monkey. But what he really did is he breathed his breath into them and gave them life. Because I remind you, the very first thing Yahweh did is he said, Let us give man dominion over all creation. So let's give them dominion over the birds of the air. So it reminds you, dominion means uh, sovereignty. A synonym for that word is sovereignty. Now, if I have sovereignty over creation, it's not my call. Yahweh gave it to me. Right. Uh, he did not finish creation. He left it up to me. Yeah. So at that point, Adam hadn't fallen yet, so he breathed life into yeah. all creation, Hallelujah. and it began to function. Oh. Yeah. And he did the same with, with Eve. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. But afterwards, when the fall came, that which he gave life to was distorted. Right. So that's why we have to come back into creation as sons and daughters, breathing the breath of Yahweh in to bring alignment to creation. That's why creation is calling for the hay. Right. The hay in me. Right. <laughs> now I, I need you to understand, I never, I, I don't constantly say in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, but nothing we do uh, takes place outside of Christ. He's the foundation and he's what I live and move out of my being. He's the Yah Hei Shem Bab Hei. Right. I'm in him and he surrounds me. He's the foundation of the kingdom I'm in. And I can't do anything outside of him because that will be divination. Right. So we just need to understand that. I'm not saying it the whole time, but that's of course the focus. Right. Right. It says um, in Psalm 33 verse 6, uh, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, by the breath of his mouth, all their hosts. Meaning that even the angels were brought to life through the breath of Yahweh. Yeah. The world was created with the utterance of the hay. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I, 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 always, I kind of changed my perception on that word, you know. You don't know someone's name, what do you call them? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you. It represents the gift of life and creates the verb of being. It's like the Father is trying to say, listen, if you understand the fullness of life, um, the engagement of this letter, this living gate, is to open you up to perceive and receive the fullness <clears throat> of divine revelation so you can know all that's needed to be known for you to walk in everything I have for you up to this point in your walk. Now we have to remind ourselves, this stuff's not taught. It has never been taught in church, so everything is new. So it's taking you a process of engagement, and that's just key, and I always say this over and over again, you cannot just listen to these messages and make it something that you have to go study. It's there to open up a gateway, a portal for you to go into and you have to engage it. That's why that's homework. And the homework is for you to, to go over these DVDs or these videos um, on YouTube or Facebook and engage the, the prayer after or even the prayer in the beginning uh, and see what needs to be activated in you to propel you into the dimension the Father's calling you into, especially with these letters. There's 22 of them. They say there's more. There's, uh, I think, 22 or 24 letters that we, there's two that we haven't engaged because we, it hasn't been spoken, it hasn't been brought into um, the, the main stream. But even when we engage those two, which I'm not too sure of right now, but they are life-changing. One of them literally means to be engaged into the, into the spirit realm. So the reason the church has been struggling to go into the spirit realm is because these letters have been missing. So now that we're beginning to engage them, it's opening up dimensions of revelation for us. And this is part of the spoken word that's out there that we get to engage. Because we don't understand it. So I say, well, somebody in the 1800s spoke a revelation um, while walking in a field where there was nobody around him who was engaging with Yahweh. Yahweh poured into him and he brought up some revelations and he spoke it into the atmosphere. I now get to go back to that spot where the word was spoken and I get to gather them in my spirit. Wow. Now we don't always understand. I know that 99.9999% of the church listen to that and think we're all crazy. Mm. Right. But we have to understand if, 
if there is a spoken and living and a written, then there's dimensions of the word that we have to engage. Then we right. cannot base everything that we know about God on what is written. That's right. Amen to that. <clears throat> so it's just slowly going deeper, higher, wider. It is divinity, the spiritual life that comes about through the first four letters. Now remind yourself <clears throat> what the first four letters really all meant. If you're looking, and I just want to quickly go back, and I don't want to engage too much, but Aleph is the first letter, and it literally means, um, it's the, 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 um, the letter of, an, of the, the, the picture of an ox, and it means um, one. It represents creation uh, of something from nothing. It is the essential symbol of beginnings and ultimate reality, right? Right. Then bait <coughs> is the second letter and it signifies number two. Bait is the letter of the story of creation, the first letter of the story of creation starting the entire Bible. And if you guys remember the story I told, the one, one represents everything is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no real rules or regulations. Right. The second one is all based on rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, which was uh, uh, um, Gimel comes in and brings a balance. Right, great. Great. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. And then we understand that Dalit is uh, the door. And it means uh, dull, which is a poor person. And we understand that the idea of this is that it brings um, all things together. Mm -hmm. right? right? So when we look at hay with that understanding, I want you to begin to perceive that the Father has literally combined these letters together in such a way that if you engage each of them, it opens up gateways, doorways, and it propels you into an order that takes you to the next level and you walk with Yahweh. Right. Now in the same breath, I want to remind you that you are not taking anything away from Yahweh. Because today, this church is still all about, um, no, it's, that's not a problem, it's all about Jesus, Holy Spirit, the Father, that's all there is. Now you have to understand that it's not all there is. I'm a father of four people, four, four, four people. <laughs> Yeah. My four-year-old, my six-year-old, my 11-year-old, and my 13-year-old. Now, when we had our first child, all our focus went into him, right? We were around him all the time. We paid him all the attention. All he knew was mommy and daddy. Mm -hmm. Now, 13 years later, he has gone through grade one, two, three, four, five, six. He's in grade seven. He has been taught by other teachers. He's been taught by the internet, by his friends. He has a whole different perception. It's not just mommy and daddy anymore. Right. But his life is all about mommy and daddy. Right. He, he loves us. He, I would say, I love you boy, and he'd go, meh. <laughs> <laughs> now that's not quite what you want to hear, but I know <laughs> that even though meh means meh, he's saying I love you too, dad. But it's yeah. not cool. Yeah. My, right. my, my, my uh, other son, my second oldest son, he is the huggy kissy guy. But let me tell you, when we're in the open and there's other people, he doesn't come near me. You know, so there's, there's so much change that takes place when we grow up. But it doesn't take away from me being his father. Right. So the father opening up these gateways and doorways for us to engage in, in the dimension of revelation that he's not giving us because we have to find it in the avenues and the order that he's placed it. Yeah. Doesn't take anything away from him, it actually adds to him. Right. Because it adds the value to you, and you become what He's waiting and longed for you to become. Yes. And of course, everything that we are to become is placed in a specific order for us to engage. Right. Like, for example, now that we are older, we realize how weird and dumb it sounds. Hey, God, creator of the universe, come here. <laughs> I mean, now that we think about it, it doesn't sound right, but the church is always saying that song. Mm. Not quite like that, but... It makes no sense. He's actually saying, well, from the very beginning, you just, just listen to Enoch, uh, because you guys don't read his book. That's why you don't know anything. But he was one of the first. I have always had uh, made it available for you to come up. He came up so many times that I said, well, you know, we're best friends now. You might as well stay up here. Uh -huh. You know, Elijah, same thing. Moses died, physically died, yet he got to take his body into the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. because of relationship, because of intimacy. Wow. You know, and he, we spent 80 days 
with Yahweh face to face. And then the father gave him a blueprint on how to build a tent where he could spend face to face time with him in the natural and the spirit. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. So there's always been a gate, but it's always been available, always been open, but we've always just been afraid of it. Father is just saying, hey, I'm here, and I need you to engage everything I made available. It's not taking from me, it's adding to me. You cannot, and I've said this many times, you cannot take glory from God. Amen. Satan can't take glory from God. No demon in hell can take glory from God. Not a fallen, fallen son, not a power principality. Nobody can take glory from God. It's not possible. Right. You know, like, I know that they believe in all kinds of other religions out there, but every other religion is equal to another demon being worshipped. <laughs> and we know this stuff, so, you know, even Paul says, you know, don't, don't eat food that was sacrificed to other animals, or animal, other demons. And so, it, it, it talks about this whole thing in 2 Corinthians, and then right at the end it says, just remind yourself, there's no other God. Right. So we just need to get ourselves to the place where we understand that engaging with these living beings, not just the letters, the seven spirits, the four living creatures, the seraphim, the seraphim, the uh, canopy of angelic, the archangels, the all creation and all that is out there for us to engage, it adds to our worship uh, to, uh, uh, our worship to Yahweh. It doesn't take from Him. And I've said this many times. It's a good example. I like it. So if I go eat at a restaurant and I enjoy the food, I would say thank you to the waitress. I would say, thank you, the food was nice, but if I understand the principle, even if I go home and I tell my friends about the food and it was so nice and, and I, I, I never get to actually speak to the chef, but everything I do after leaving that restaurant, praising the one who made the food, although I don't even mention his name, it brings glory to him. And I guess we just really need to understand that. It represents the life essence of all creation. It symbolizes the effortlessness of the world and its symbol of divinity. It's the Father saying, I, I need you to engage this because the essence that you need to govern creation is in it. The essence you need to become what you're destined to be is in the engagement of the hay. Now you have to understand, I don't go into the hay and then all of a sudden I come out knowing everything. It's a building into, it's a perceiving and an understanding. Because within the hay, I'm, when I'm in the hay, I'm in the Father. I'm in the yad hay vav hay because that's where the living letters are. They're in Him. You gotta understand that? Because that's where they came from. And of course in the Hebrew culture, whatever is in the beginning has to be in the end. So for us to engage now, we have to understand there's a kingdom within Yahweh that we get to go into. That's why it says, love and move and have your being in me. Because there's a dimension in him that we need to live out of so that we can carry the full value of who he is. Yes. And that's what the hay opens up. And of course, we can begin to understand the breath. Because several times in my day, um, I would find myself in different nations of breathing my breath. Now, I'm called Son of Fire in the Kingdom of Heaven. I don't want to talk about that too much because it sounds too weird. But um, meaning that I, as a spirit being, I'm, I'm, I'm a fireball. And when I start coming out of the atmosphere of the kingdom of heaven into the atmosphere of creation, I start blowing my breath into the nation that I'm placed in at the time. A while back, the father came in my spinning class. Well, the father, some lady comes walking into the spinning class in the spirit. And she says, we need you. She's all panicky and freaked out. She calls me into the class and says, you know, she calls me, says, uh, please come help us. And we translate to a beach, a beachfront in Australia, where there we are about, about two, maybe two miles, uh, I keep saying a little bit further in, but it was probably about two miles. I could see the beach from the place where we were standing, but it was probably two or three miles in, into the ocean. And on top of the water, there was uh, three other guys, another lady, so there was five people together plus myself, and they were standing around this massive dragon, um, fallen seraphim, wow. were just freaking out. Like, um, I, I, I would say like a horse, but that wouldn't quite place the picture, like a wild horse you're trying to contain. It was more like a, a lion, a violent, aggressive, vicious thing that you're trying to contain. It was just freaking out. And they were there, swords out. They really didn't know what to do. 
And so when I got there, I already had my sword in my hand, but I realized that this was not just your average little dragon. Right. This was to establish a whole different dimension of governance within the nation, and we had to place the order of this in the right place. So I said, okay, guys, we have to go to the court of war, and immediately all, all six of us ascended into the court of war. And we began to speak with other men, and they were basically telling us the importance of doing this right because of the value of the slaying of this dragon and how this will begin to change the nation of Australia. I don't know anything about Australia. I know that there's half of our South African people live there. But I mean, I don't know anything about Australia per se. I wasn't, I wasn't the one that saw the dragon. I was, I was literally just there. And out of my little bit of knowledge that I have, which is really, if I look at the things that we're engaging now, I have no knowledge of this stuff. I've, I've done it a couple of times. I think I might have made a big mess up somewhere, somehow, because of a lack of knowledge of what you're doing. But uh, they, they probably saw it on YouTube or they listened to me on Facebook. But when they summoned me to come in, um, I at least had the basics covered and knew what we needed to do. So as we went into the court of war, there was other men and other women that told us what we should do and how we should do it. By the time we went into the court of angels to get um, angelic uh, uh, beings assigned to, to the uh, taking away of this dragon, there was a legion assigned. By the time we got back to the same spot, that dragon was gone. Um, but, 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 but meaning the angels already came and took him. Um, they bind him up and then the process that you go through, um, they have to sort that out because it's their responsibility. Right. Uh, but usually the idea is that you want to get uh, all that which was stolen from the nation out of his belly yeah. and then place that in your mountain and then start trading for the nation on the Sea of Glass. Wow. Yeah. But it was incredible and of course we're beginning to understand that the Father is opening up our hearts for these things, because 10 years ago this wasn't even possible. It might have been possible because if you listen to Ian Clayton, he's been doing this for years, and his, his favorite saying is, don't just go slay a dragon. And I've noticed in my life, I have never, not once, have I just gone out to slay a dragon. I don't think it works like that. I don't think you can just go out and slay a dragon. It's every single time I've walked with the seven spirits, there was the very first time that someone came into a room, a spirit being, from another nation came into the room. If I have to see this, these five people in the natural, I would recognize them. It was that clear. And it was quick. I was on the spinning bike, spinning. So my body and my soul was, was, was spinning. <laughs> <laughs> and my soul was doing something. My, my spirit was doing something. It was actually incredible. I had to go back in several times to get the whole picture, to understand. But we're beginning to realize the power of who we are. And how it can change things. Now, I mean, that opened a gateway, a doorway for the nation to begin to fall into place. We understand that this is the year of alignment. And so there's a lot of weird things that's about to happen in our nations and in our lives. But things have to fall into place so that who we are, the structure that we're meant to be, can carry the weight the Father's pouring into us. Yeah. It also contains within it the freedom of choice. Now, this is, the, this is really key. Because as I engage with hay, I begin to understand the value of the right choice. But in the same breath, I begin to understand the, the desire the Father has for me to be in Him so that His will is mine. Yeah. So that what I choose, I choose because I want it, and because what I want is His, his perfect will. Yeah. So I don't do things because I just feel like doing stuff. Right. I do things because it's the Father's will for me, but I don't particularly focus on the fact that it's His will for me. I do it because I want to do it, and what I want to do is His will. Right. Yeah. And that means growing into Him, living, moving, having your being in Him, and living from out of His four faces. And we have to begin to understand the value of living out of the, the double hay. That's a double breath. <laughs> That's a double breath. <coughs> Meaning that you cannot live without him. Right. It's yod, yod hey, vav hey. It's the breathing in and out that which keeps you alive. Right. I love that. <coughs> he, hey is one of the letters of the name of Yahweh, giving it a special significance within the Aleph Tuf. It's the Father's desire for you to begin to understand the value of these letters and the engagement within each of them that opens up for you. Now understand that a fiery gate, anything fire within the kingdom of heaven is revelation. Now, of course, revelation 
go to a purity because it's repentance, it's changing the way you think. Mm -hmm. And as I receive new revelation compared to the old revelation, then I change the way I think. Right. And of course the idea of repentance is to understand that it's to start thinking from a high place. Right. right? So the Father desires for us to begin to see where we need to shift into and how we need to get to that place that He has called us to operate from. Right. So you're looking at the hay and you begin to understand it's divine revelation. Engaging divine revelation, the breath of the Creator. Uh, it's so the Father says, and of course we understand that five, five also equals great. Right? Five also represents the hand, which means the help, supply, support, mm -hmm. right? Um, cover, protect. Mm -hmm. And so the Father wants us to understand that when we start engaging these gates and as He opens it up for us to go deeper into it, it's just there to give you a helping hand, to open up doors, to be your cover, to to lift you up, to propel you into the revelation you need to go deeper into the Father. It's all about going deeper into the Father and knowing Him in a greater way. Because everything that happens within the Kingdom of Heaven is to get you to know Him better. Especially when you understand engaging with the seven spirits, if you guys can remember, it's all about being positioned in Him. As the Father places you in the right position so you can become the King that you're supposed to be in His Kingdom. And it's a little bit more than what we perceive it to be. So the Father is elevating it into that high place. Exciting, right? Yes. Let's stand. Thank you. 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 Thank and that will represent them stepping into the fullness of the name of Yahweh. It's a representation. I sometimes do that when I drive in the car. I remember doing it in Baton Rouge when I was uh, busy preaching on the, the name of Yahweh. And I was getting so drunk I was slurring my words. Because your spirit being just wants to go in because it's where it comes from. It's a life that Yahweh pours into us. So Father, right now in the name of Yeshua, we want to step into the hay. Father, we want a revelation of the hay. We want to begin to understand the dimension of these letters, Father, the Dalits. We want to get to understand Gimel. I love Gimel. We want to get to understand Beit and, and Allah, Father. And there's, there's more for us to engage, and we're going to engage in full force. So I ask you for revelation. Open us up. Father, let the Ekras here begin to understand that there's more to what we've engaged up to this point than what we can even begin to fathom. We serve an infinite God, and He's not bound to 3,000 pages. He is not bound to our perception. He's not bound to our belief system. Wow. He is not bound to what we understand and what we don't understand. He is an infinite God that knows more than what we can ever fathom. That has only but given us a portion. And His desire for us is to go into all of what is made available for right now. Father, we're beginning to understand that the next move of God is not revival. It's revelation. Yeah. Yeah. And revelation brings a dimension of revival that the face of the earth has never seen. So I pray, Father, you will open up your sons and daughters and let's go deeper, higher, wider into you. Father, we love you. We praise you in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Amen.